Welcome to today's show. We have a very special guest for you. We have Greg Crawford, who's the president, founder, and CEO of Crawford Trust Company in Nevada. Greg, great to have you on the show today. Thanks, Blake, for inviting me. I'm very glad to be here. So, Greg, can you start out by telling me a little bit about your background and your company's background? Sure. Uh, Crawford Trust is a Nevada licensed trust company, so we can offer a lot of unique solutions and benefits that Nevada Trust can provide. Uh, my background is I previously ran another trust company here in Nevada, the largest independent trust company in Nevada, and a few of us left uh, the old firm to create a new one during COVID, and we're off to a great start. Very good. So um, we've been working together for some time now. We've had quite a few clients that you've helped us out with. Glad to uh, be able to work with you. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, some strategies that you use uh, to help protect your clients' assets? Sure. The benefits of Nevada Trust really revolve around a couple of different areas, asset protection, tax benefits, and dynasty provisions. A lot of flexibility built into all of those provisions. Uh, Nevada is one of the handful of states that allows what's called a self-settled spendthrift trust. That's a complicated way of saying it's an asset protection trust. So you can fund a trust that you are, in fact, a beneficiary of with your assets. And after two years passes, um, those assets are protected from unknown creditors and future liabilities and other sorts of perils in life that, that no one uh, can anticipate, but we all know can happen. And can you tell me about a time when you saw a Nevada Asset Protection Trust benefit a client? Oh, most definitely. Um, they're beneficial in a variety of ways because they do protect your assets against unforeseen kinds of events. Creditors coming out of car accidents and those sorts of things. They can also protect family assets for many, many generations. So if you're in a high risk or high liability field, or say you're concerned about the stability of one of your kids' marriages, um, all of those kinds of uh, concerns that people have in life can be addressed with a Nevada Asset Protection Trust. So the, the assets that are placed in the trust once a certain amount of time has passed are very, very well protected uh, from uh, outside uh, creditors. It's a, a, a very, very common structure that we have in our office, and we have seen dozens of people over the years helped dramatically by um, by using these, these these types of trusts. The outcomes that they have in, in some of these unfortunate kinds of situations uh, where accidents and other things occur, the outcomes are much better when these trusts are in place as opposed to when they're not. So I find a common misconception is that people think that you only need an asset protection trust if you're super wealthy. This is certainly not what I've seen with my client base. What would you say is the starting level of assets that somebody would have before they should consider creating a Nevada Asset Protection Trust? Well, typically we see um, asset levels uh, at around half a million dollars or more, but we've had trusts as small as $100,000. I mean, whatever you have to protect, um, if you're concerned about future liabilities, whatever you have is a lot to you. And since the fees to maintain these trusts are not particularly exorbitant, uh, they can be economical at, at some pretty low asset levels that people wouldn't traditionally associate with asset protection trusts. Right. So it's a matter of a few things. It's not simply the number, the level of your assets, but it's what risk you're facing, how important those assets are to you as well. Um, Most so, in, so in addition to forming a Nevada Asset Protection Trust, sometimes clients will form underlying entities as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what underlying entities or what other documents or tools are used in conjunction with a Nevada Asset Protection Trust or that you've seen used? Sure. The most common underlying entity is a Nevada LLC uh, and a Nevada limited liability company. Those offer their own layers of asset protection as well as the trust. So when they're combined um, in a strategy, they are extremely effective. And there's no record of any case of Nevada piercing a Nevada LLC title to a trust. There simply isn't any case law along those lines. The other advantage of, of an LLC in Nevada is very often you could be named the own, your own manager of the LLC. So even though the membership interest, the ownership of the uh, uh, 
LLC is titled to the trust, you have a lot of control and authority uh, in terms of investment selections and other sorts of things that you can do at the LLC level, which ordinarily you wouldn't be able to do at the trust level. So it, it gives that flexibility that I referenced earlier when the, the limited liability company is used with the Nevada Trust. Other structures could be used as well, depending on circumstances. Uh, but the LLC, the Nevada LLC titled to a Nevada trust, is the most common and most popular uh, solution that we see in our offices. And I think it's a great solution for clients who may want the protection of a Nevada Asset Protection Trust, but they're not ready to give up some of the control that comes along with managing their assets so we can place the Nevada LLC or an LLC based anywhere under the Nevada sure. Trust. The member of that LLC, the owner would be the Asset Protection Trust, but the manager of the assets, the one with signing power in the account, would be the client. And this is fine to do anytime that there's no pending litigation. Now, if there's pending litigation or the client's been called for debtor's exam, at that time, we probably recommend that the trustee step in to serve as manager. But up until that point, it's a healthy balance of protection and control. Exactly. So, and, and the number one thing that people are typically concerned about in creating a trust is that loss of control. Um, but by using a Nevada LLC, by taking advantage of the Nevada statutes that allow flexibility uh, in terms of directions to the trustee around distributions and, and investments, uh, you can have a very, very high level of protection at the same time uh, have the control that most people want to retain um, you know, with their assets. So asset protection is about keeping your property protected while you're alive. Just real quickly, can we talk a little bit about how estate planning folds into asset protection planning, how the two of them work together? Most definitely. So the, the asset protection trust in and of itself is an excellent vehicle, but it's not a complete estate plan. Everyone needs a revocable living trust. Um, and they're very important components. It's not only the things that, that aren't titled to the trust, but all the health care directives and other things that go along with the traditional estate plan. The building block of uh, your estate plan really is the revocable living trust. The asset protection trust is a specialized trust that operates side by side to protect assets, but the revocable living trust avoids probate, includes a lot of instructions about what you want to have happen if you're incapacitated. It's They, they serve different purposes, but both are essential to having a complete estate plan. And just to add a few points to that, an estate plan is for after you pass away or once you become incapacitated. And a common structure that we use with our clients is we set it up so that the client's assets are currently in an asset protection trust. And then upon their passing, those assets pour into a revocable trust. This gives the client the ability to change who the beneficiaries are during their lifetime without changing up their asset protection trust. Now, when we set up this arrangement, we do include a provision that the trustee of the asset protection trust is not to distribute assets to the revocable trust. If doing so, could allow a creditor to jump in there and snag the assets. If there's a threat that that could happen, instead what we will do is have the trustee incorporate the dispositive provisions of the revocable living trust into the asset protection trust. So that allows the client the ability to make sure that everything passes, but still have the flexibility to change the estate plan, which is always important. I never want to give take away my client's power to disinherit a child. I don't want my clients to do this, but I want to make sure that they have that power over their children. Um, sure. So, yeah, exactly. uh, a great, great point, Blake. That's a, another whole element of flexibility that you design into the strategies. And, and you know, clients clients appreciate the flexibility. They want to retain that, that ability to influence things down the road. And that's a terrific part of the strategy, too. And I have a set of nine-year-old twins, and I remind them about this constantly. Well, if you're not going to take out the trust, I may be updating my estate plan soon. So, um, so tell me a little, little bit about um, – where you see what changes you've seen in the asset protection industry since you got into this and you've been in this just about as long as anybody in the industry and where you maybe see the industry going so what changes have happened what changes do you maybe see coming sure sure i think the number one change that we've seen over the years is the greater awareness and acceptance of, of asset protection planning uh, when it was first developed it was a uh, somewhat of a foreign concept. There was some skepticism as to how well it would work. Would it stand up to, to challenges and the, the test of time that you always want to see? That 
that has all been addressed now. As I said, there's no uh, case of any sort of uh, piercing of these trusts in the state of Nevada, and we've had cases go all the way to the Nevada Supreme Court. So these trusts have been tested and they've been proven to work. So the acceptance and the recognition of the importance of having an asset protection component to your estate plan uh, has gone up uh, over the years. I think the number one uh, issue that we're gonna see in the future is there's a tremendous demographic wave of people who will eventually you know, age out and, and pass away. And that transition of assets from one generation to another as baby boomers uh, age and, and leave us um, is going to be a really important uh, component of the future in terms of how is that done. Uh, Dynasty trusts, which is a, another aspect of, of Nevada, allow for trusts to last up to 365 years. So if you are concerned about, again, stability of a child's marriage or maybe they're just not responsible with money, the, the, the transfer of assets to the next generation is a gift. And you can put conditions on those gifts as, as part of the trust. So if you want to leave a legacy of education or some sort of extended benefit over multiple generations, pay for your great, great, great grandkids college, um, all of those sorts of things can be accomplished in this generation of trust planning that maybe wasn't available, you know, a couple of generations ago because the laws didn't exist. Uh, and this is certainly very true. When the asset protection industry started out, it was unclear whether or not the term asset protection was going to be used. Now it's a term that's very well embraced. And some attorneys are even out there pushing, well, if you're not asset, if you're not doing some asset protection, you're committing malpractice. I don't know that I would go that far in every situation, but I definitely like that, like that mindset. And it's becoming sure. more and more mainstream. I was down in a St. Kitts and Nevis a couple of weeks ago, meeting with an asset protection attorney out of California, and he mm -hmm. told me that uh, back in England, setting up an offshore trust was as common as setting up a revocable yeah. trust is, is now. And so I think this could be very much the trend where if you have half a million dollars of assets, if you're involved in business, it's pretty standard to do something to protect those assets. And in today's very litigious society, um, it makes sense to engage in this type of planning. So when it comes to setting up an asset protection trust, there are certainly lots of options in terms of jurisdictions, both domestically mm -hmm. and offshore. Could you give a little bit of um, an overview of why someone would select Nevada over an offshore trust and why someone would select Nevada over one of the other states that allows for an asset protection trust, such as Alaska, South Dakota, Wyoming, Delaware? Sure, of course. And there are a handful of states that are very competitive with Nevada, and I, I don't knock the other jurisdictions because I think you can you can benefit from uh, an asset protection trust in several different top-tier jurisdictions, Nevada, South Dakota, Delaware, uh, being, being in that class, no doubt. I think when you're looking at Nevada, there are a few things that distinguish us. One is the fact that the lack of a state-level income tax, there is no state income tax in Nevada. That's actually constitutional. It's not statutory. So the ability to change the state constitution uh, exists. It requires a vote of the people uh, two years apart, essentially people voting to tax themselves, which isn't the most popular or probable thing to have happen. Uh, so the, the tax environment here is, I think, very stable for the long run. No exception creditors. Uh, certain states have exception creditors for certain classes of creditors. That does not exist in Nevada. Um, and we have a very well-developed industry here. I mean, if you think about what, say, Delaware is to New York City, Nevada is the same thing to California, and that's how it developed. This is a wonderful place to store and protect your assets. The state has a reputation for that, and it's something that we're always working on to make sure that we're a top-tier jurisdiction. I, I work with the legislature. It meets every other year. They understand the importance and the significance of this industry and all the jobs and economic activity it brings to the state. When you have a, a, a valuable component of your state economy, you work really hard to, to protect it. So certainly if someone said, hey, I, I live in Chicago and I'd like to set up a, a, an asset protection trust in South Dakota, by all means do it. Um, there are a lot of good selections out there, but I think Nevada has, it, Nevada is definitely one of them uh, to consider. Um, and I'll even go so far as to say Nevada is the top jurisdiction in my opinion. And uh, I'm 
agnostic to where my clients set up trust. It doesn't make any difference to me, except that I want my clients to be in the most secure position because that's good for that's good for bo- both of us. Um, it's also very interesting what you said, or very important what you said about you have a state government that is vested in the protection of. Uh, keeping its reputation as an asset protection state. Mm-hmm. It's very easy for another state to come out and just control C, control V, copy what this what the legislature has passed, but does it have the mentality to continue to uphold uh, uphold that? We wouldn't want to set up a trust and let's say Florida allows an asset protection tr- trust law and then we get a new governor in and all of a sudden uh, those trusts are no longer no longer protected. The long-standing history, like Nevada does, of being very debtor-friendly is very important consideration when setting up an asset protection trust. Now, when a client sets up an asset protection trust with Crawford Trust, what are their options in terms of opening up a, a bank account? Where can they where can they bank, and what would they be able to do within their trust in terms of investing? Sure, and that is another aspect of the flexibility of Nevada law. So. Um, if someone were to open a, a trust and, and Crawford Trust is the trustee, we we can serve solely as the administrative trustee. So we are the legal link to Nevada so that the nexus, the legal relationship with Nevada is formed and the benefits flow from there. We don't manage investments. Uh, we don't even have to handle the distribution um, uh, aspect of the trust. So different components of the trust can be given to other other individuals or entities. So here at Crawford Trust, we have lots of trusts where the assets are managed at J.P. Morgan, Goldman, or people, you know, set up their own Schwab account. They they are their own investment manager. It's done at the LLC level. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you invest your assets, who makes that decision, who has the authority, where you you have those assets custodied. We have relationships with all the major investment banks, um, not only in the U.S., but even some over in Europe. So it's very flexible in that regard. On the retail banking side, uh, just because of convenience sake, there is a U.S. bank across the street from us. We often recommend U.S. bank, but people are free to choose their own institution. You do want to have some portion of your assets in Nevada. That's part of the statute for the asset protection. So we strongly encourage if you're flexible around, um, you know, where to establish the bank account, uh, we strongly recommend having an account in Nevada. Of course, we facilitate all of that in the background for our clients. Is there a minimum account size that has to be in Nevada or is it just any the, the $1,000 account? Yeah, the statutes aren't very clear and they don't specify a minimum amount of assets to be held in Nevada. Okay. I think, I think it's wise to have something meaningful. You know, I wouldn't recommend, you know, just putting $10 or something into a, an account out here. You know, sometimes a few thousand dollars will be enough is, is kind of how most uh, legal practitioners view it. So technically the letter of the law says some assets. Um, you'd like that to be a little more than some sort of de minimis level uh, that might, Understood. might cause a problem. Yeah, exactly. So, but, but $10,000 would at least check oh, the box and then yeah. the cl- yeah, clients exactly. could put them more if, if, they, if they would like to. Um, so one or two final questions. Um, yeah. Clients who own cryptocurrency, they want to keep it protected from lawsuits. They're not going to go and claim that they lost all their crypto in a boating accident. They're going to yes. disclose it. They're, they're not going to risk criminal criminal penalties, but they don't want it lost in a, in a lawsuit. What can clients who are interested in investing in crypto or have crypto investments do with the Nevada Asset Protection Trust? Sure. Again, this is a, a kind of an evolving aspect of trust law, and certainly we're seeing a dramatic uptick in, in new types of assets, digital assets being titled to Nevada Trust. Um, because of the, the frequency, the typical frequency of the trading, we will see people uh, use an underlying LLC uh, and, and have the, the crypto assets held at the LLC level. Um, but we can be flexible depending on client needs and, and again, the frequency of, of activity and those sorts of things. So crypto assets are, um, are eligible to be titled to a Nevada Trust in one strategy or another. Very good. And uh, finally, Greg, somebody wants to set up a Nevada Asset Protection Trust. They've listened to this podcast. They're interested in working with Crawford Trust. How does someone get in contact with you? Uh, Very easy. All of our contact information is at CrawfordTrust.com. You can also call us uh, 775-499-8900. I do like to point out that because we're a trust company doesn't mean that we actually draft trusts. That's where 
Blake, you would come into the equation because we don't we don't provide trust. We simply administer them once they're established. But obviously, we have a great working relationship with you, Blake. And I think uh, the two of us, our two respective organizations, can get the clients the the outcomes that they want. Well, I appreciate the plug, and I appreciate ha- and I appreciate having you on my podcast. Thank- thanks for all, all all of this, Greg. You have a great rest of your day. Hey, I enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Take care.